Hello there, this is Jeff Erdman, EDS Inc. Shannon, and we have another little project tonight. What we're going to be doing is converting some standard hinges to uh, non-rising pins and security hinge. The way we're going to do that is we're going to put a set screw into the uh, barrel of the pin we'll have to take and we'll have to slot the pin for the set screw and uh, and then we have to put in a security pin now what that does if you take a look at the hinge and you close it if this knuckle was to be cut off then having a non-rising pin would not do you any good they'd be able to take and pull that door right out of the opening so the way that you stop that as you put a pin that goes from one leaf to the other leaf and uh, so that prevents them from pulling the door out of the opening uh, when the knuckle is completely cut off. Uh, these hinges are going to be used at uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base on uh, secure buildings so they need to have a high security on these exterior doors. So we've already uh, laid this out if you might notice, the hinge has logos on the inside and the outside, and we don't want to corrupt those logos. Uh, so what we've done is we've, we've placed our holes right about in here and here is what's going to happen. We'll drill through right through this thing, uh, the hinge on the drill press, then we'll take it over to the milling machine and then uh, widen those holes out with a milling cutter. Um, so what we're going to do first, we've, we've date, uh, high, um, blued the hinge and I've already marked it for the location. So we'll set up the drill press so that uh, all the holes will be drilled exactly the same on each hinge. And then we'll take it over to the milling machine. And one leaf will be uh, drilled out on the milling machine uh, for a half inch and the other one for a 15 30 seconds and the 15 30 seconds is where the stud will go in and uh, the stud will be uh, press fit into the hinge and uh, and so it it will uh, uh, th then be a permanent part of one leaf of the hinge and as it shuts the other side of the stud will go right into the other hinge uh, the door will have to be drilled out or the frame will have to be drilled out depending which way the hinge is, is put into the unit. And uh, that will supply the security that they need uh, because once they cut the knuckle off, they won't be able to move that door. So let's go ahead and we'll go over to the drill press first. We'll drill all our holes. We'll show you a few of those. I'm not going to bore you with drilling them all out, but uh, we'll get a few of those done. Then we'll go over and set up the milling machine and start milling the holes out uh, for what we want. We'll have to make our pins on the lathe. Uh, we'll also have to take the uh, hinge pin itself that's in here and we'll have to take those out, put them in the lathe and, and uh, groove them for the set screw to set into those. So that's what we're up to. Uh, thanks for joining us and I hope you enjoy this. Well we're over at our old Buffalo drill press and we're going to uh, start drilling our holes. So I want to tell you a little bit about our setup. So if you want to look down here, you notice I've got it clamped uh, into my little vise here on the the uh, um, the drill press, and uh, I've got some half inch parallels on this side. I got a five eighths this side, and the reason for that is because this knuckle is about an eight, uh, eighth of an inch thicker on each side than the leaves themselves. So I want to have a, 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 a parallel hole so I needed to uh, lift this end up a little bit uh, with a thicker par parallel uh, to make my hole. On this side I have my steric uh, um, indicator and I've got it set uh, well right close to zero. Let's get it down to zero here. Okay, so I got that set at zero, and it's set here up against the hinge. So that way I'll know exactly where to put my hinge each, each time. So as I move from one hinge to the next, 
it'll be a pretty quick setup. I just loosen my vise, slide this out, slide the next one in, and I'm good. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to attempt to do here. So uh, we'll start drilling in just a second. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and make our first hole. We're drilling into 304 stainless steel. It's doing a nice job. We'll pull one hinge out. Set our next one in. Let's start our next cut. Oops, almost forgot one thing. Our two washers. So what I have here, because the uh, hinge itself has uh, a set in it, so I've got some washers that I'm putting under here that are just the right thickness for the set. Almost forgot that. Okay. Now let's take this back to zero. It should be good there. We've got a measure that's set to, so we're checking that against the vise itself. Okay, we're ready to drill. Second hole. Once we drill all these hinges, then what I'll do is separate the pins and the two sides. And we'll uh, Okay, uh, we've drilled all our hinges out. Now we have to mill them. And I've kind of changed up on my previous idea. I've actually ordered some 916 stainless steel. I didn't have any uh, stainless steel round stock. I thought I did. Uh, what I do have is way too big. I don't want to spend the time milling it down. So I ordered out some stainless uh, uh, 916. And so what I've done is I've, I'm going to be drilling these out at half an inch and then I'll uh, take 
the uh, uh, I'll mill the pins out to a thousandths over that, so it'll be a nice tight press fit. And uh, then what I'll do is uh, uh, on the uh, opposite side, I'll actually take it down below a half an inch. Uh, so I'll have the end that's going to be pressed. It'll be uh, a thousandths over. And then the end that's not pressed, I'll probably take it down to maybe uh, a seven sixteenths so it'll fit into the opposite hole. That way I only have one hole I'm machining on both of these. Um, I don't have the right bits. Um, and that may change too. I may go see if I can change up my head and redo this. But right now I've got this all set up. I've got it set, it, set so that when it mills, it's going to mill in the center. If you look over here, I've set up a stop. This, this, and this vise are both trimmed in. So I used this to set up a stop device for this uh, hinge. So I'll slip it out this way and I'll be able to slip the new hinge in. It'll be right where it's supposed to be. We'll bring the uh, uh, table up and uh, we'll machine out that hole. Now the reason I grilled these original holes is so that uh, I have a, uh, I can plunge it down through it. So uh, now we have a nice hole that we can use to, to uh, uh, start our uh, machining and that way I have a really nice round uh, half inch hole and I'll, uh, I'll double check all that with my uh, mics before I start cutting my pins so I make sure that my pins are the right size. But uh, at any rate, that's what my intent is. That's what we're going to try to do. So we're going to go ahead and start going. Okay, we're going to turn on our milling machine now. Uh, I'm going to check the head. It's right, right up above you there. Make sure that we're getting oil to the head. Yeah, oil's coming up, so we're going to go ahead and uh, start our cut. change my mind again. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill on uh, this one here, I'm going to drill a 5 8 hole. So that way I won't even have to turn down my 9 16 um, side. I'll be able to uh, uh, just uh, cut the one side, the half inch side that's going to uh, fit into this part uh, to press into it and uh, the 9 16 
I can leave it just as it is. Don't have to worry about taking it down. And it'll work just fine uh, folding in to the, the other half. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, it's going to take a little bit more work on the mill, but uh, I pretty much decided that's what I'm going to do. So uh, let's go ahead and I've got it uh, already set up, put the bit in. So I'll go ahead and uh, we'll set, set our first one in. Let's see which one I wanted to do this one here. So we're going to take Take this, we're going to run this in here, same setup, we've already got our, our uh, centers figured on this, so we don't have to worry about uh, that issue, uh, I never changed anything, well I pulled this off to put this bit in but I brought her back to zero so we're good so it's going to be exactly where the other hole is and uh, we'll do one hinge at a time so let's go ahead and we'll get this started and repeating the same thing for all the hinges that I'm doing. So I'll turn you off and I'll bring you back when we do the next step. Okay, we're back at, at it again this evening. Uh, it's just a little bit after 7 this evening and we're getting started again. We got our uh, round stock in from McMaster Car. I've got some 9 sixteenths uh, 303 stainless. Uh, it's uh, machinable and it was a tight tolerance uh, rod that I got. Uh, it's about three feet long, which is more than enough. I should only need about 18 inches, 16 inches, something like that. What we're doing is we're going to be making pins that are going to be pressed into this hinge. I'm going to bring this forward so you can see a little bit better. So what we have is we have uh, this hole here. This is a half inch hole. And uh, the pin is going to stick out past this hole about a half an inch and the thickness of this material is uh, 0.180. So we need to make a pin that's 0.680. Now my material is 9 sixteenths. I'm only going to take it down right here where this hole is. So uh, I'm going to only take it down uh, uh, to uh, say 0.504 uh, I think. We're going to try that and see how it fits. And uh, uh, that'll be the size of our, our uh, press fit into here. So, uh, so we're going to go about uh, four thousandths over. Hopefully that gives me enough. Uh, makes a nice tight fit. I've got a hydraulic press here that I'll press them in with. And um, I was thinking about using my dake, but I'm, I'm trying to make it a tighter fit. Uh, now this is my first experience doing this, so we'll see how it comes out. So at any rate, um, so what I have to do, I've got my lathe all set up. I've got a, uh, a dial indicator on there. So my lateral movement uh, will be, uh, I'll use that dial indicator to indi indicate how far I have to move because uh, I'm only going to take uh, uh, this thickness, uh, 0.180, uh, out of that material uh, and uh, then I'll make my next one. And the way I've got it laid up, I, I'm going to lay it up with my first cut will be the end of the pin. So that'll be the, the part that sticks out here. So I'll cut that in 
And I'll only take it in maybe a quarter of an inch on that, if maybe even less than that, maybe an eighth of an inch, just enough so I could camphor the corner on that. <coughs> we'll come back to it later and cut it off. We'll cut each one off as we go, go through at a later time. But right now, uh, we're going we're gonna to make each one of these pieces to size. Uh, and so I'll, I'll do, uh, I'll start with the, on the far left, or far, far right actually, up where the tailstock is, and I'll uh, uh, cut into my rod and uh, camphor the edge of that. Uh, and I'll probably do all my cuts before I camphor, so I just change the tool once and, and then I'll come back out and part it all off. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, uh, make my uh, cut for the top, camphor it, then I'll go to the back and take it down to thickness and then I'll move it over again uh, and uh, um, until I get the right, right thickness of this because my tooling is 0.120, this is 0.180. So it'll take two cuts to get down to depth. After I do that, then what I'll do is uh, um, cut into that uh, a little bit deeper, maybe another eighth of an inch. And then I'll go over and start my next cut uh, for the part that'll stick in, then cut the head, and and then I'll go back down to my pin, the part that's going to press into the, the hinge. So that way I can do it somewhat mass production. Anyway, I'll take you over there and I'll show you that uh, as we get going. So uh, get to do some lathe work tonight. So, I, so I've got my uh, uh, part in my lathe. And I've got it dialed in. I've got a little bit of run out on the end. Uh, it's an old lathe. I can't. I played with it for quite a while. Tried to readjust my tail stock and what have you. And uh, I, I just couldn't get rid of it. So I'm just going to have to leave it as it is. It's about, uh, uh, about uh, uh, one thousandth of an inch. And uh, so that's going to play into uh, my parts, unfortunately. Uh, it's a smaller diameter. Uh, steel here. Let me take you down a little bit here. I'll lock this in so you can see it. There we go. So it's smaller diameter material and so uh, obviously uh, that that uh, run out is going to cause me some headache. Um, hopefully by by giving myself uh, about five thousandths, four or five thousandths, I'll be able to maintain enough material to press it into my hinge. Uh, that's my intent anyway. We'll see how it works out. Uh, so we'll see 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 how it works. Um, like I said, I've never done this before, so we're going to give it a shot and see how she does. So first I'm going to bring this up, I'm going to turn on my lathe, bring this off and just actually run out, it's not too awfully bad. Make, make, I mean once I put the, the cutter up to it, it's cutting pretty evenly all the way around that. So let me uh, set this up to zero. That's my zero for my uh, cutter. So my cut is 0.0585 uh, off this to get down to my 0.504. And, uh, and of course, we're, we're only going to go in half of that. So that'll be 30 thousandths of an inch is what we're going to cut. We're going to make that our standard and see how it works. So uh, this first cut, all we're going to be doing is running in and uh, um, enough so that I can camphor the, the edge because this will be the top of the pin. It won't be the pin that will be set. 
and then we'll go down and we'll make our cut for our pin. And uh, so the what I've done here, I've got my indicator up here, and I've set up a little block on my. Okay, so we've got this uh, <coughs> set up here, so that we can we can actually run this back exactly the amounts that I want to. Uh, I'll use this indicator for the lateral movement, and uh, on because I don't have a, a gauge on my my handle here, anything to check and see how far I'm moving. So this is how I'm going to do it. And uh, as far as the in, the the cut into the middle, I can use my uh, you know I have I have um, a zero set here, so I can just crank that in. I will know how many thousands I'm cutting out of it. So that's what the plan is. So let's go ahead and we'll get started.
I've got, uh, oh, about uh, 27 of these or so. And this isn't all of them. I got some over by my vise uh, where I filed some of the rough stuff off of them. So the next process is to uh, clean them up and then press them into the hinges. Well, we've completed our task. Uh, we got our hinges. We've uh, put our security uh, stud in them. So this is what it looks like. And you have a hole on the back side. So what happens when the door shuts, this pin sticks out. Oops, let's see if I can sticks out into the frame. And if, for instance, they wouldn't they cut this butt right off here, uh, they still wouldn't be able to get the door off the the out of the jam because these pins will hold it in place. Uh, so they wouldn't be able to slide the, the door back out. So uh, that's what we accomplished. Uh, press fit all these. I had made a couple of extra ones too, so I've got probably about 10 extra in my uh, box. Um, I had to kind of clean up the tips of these because a lot of them I had to cut with a, a saw instead of part, the parting tool. And my parting tool tip broke in the last couple of them. Uh, uh, kind of a hokey way of doing it. I don't have a steady rest and and I don't have a collet uh, chuck. So uh, I had to make do with what I had and we got it done. Now, long short of it, it's about 3.30 in the morning so I'll have this uh, loaded up and cleaned up and ready to go just about the time the truck pulls in this morning for uh, uh, the delivery to go out. So, uh, so this is what they look like. They have a, uh, we made this bottom part about uh, 0 0.505 or 0 0.504 I mean and uh, the top part is 9 sixteenths. So uh, this was a tight press fit. Um, my uh, standard Dake uh, Arbor Press didn't always get the job done. So I had to uh, add some pressure from a, a, another means to, to get these set. But you got them all in, it's all done. I can call it a night after I pack them all up and get them on the, the pallet for delivery in the morning. Well, today. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching EDS Inc. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe. Uh, we'll have some more stuff coming on. Uh, my nephew is due out here. As soon as it quits snowing and blizzarding out in the Dakotas, that's where he's from, uh, then uh, he'll be heading out here. Then we'll be starting to work on uh, our shop in earnest. We'll be putting a loft in up there, moving up all our grinders up there, getting them all running, and um, then we'll be uh, reorganizing this whole bottom floor area. Uh, right now, it just looks like a pigsty. You got tools everywhere. Uh, I mean, we're slowly getting stuff up on the walls, but uh, when you're uh, you're not fully organized and you don't have the time to do it, it just uh, uh, turns into a big style, really. So, uh, but anyway, we're, we're getting it done. Eventually it'll, it'll be a working shop that uh, we'll be able to efficiently go in and do something and get out of it. So, but anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the content. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. And, uh, Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and uh, have a good day.